What is going on guys? Matt Downs with Daily Grind Fantasy Sports here to give you the edge for this 127 slate on DraftKings. Cannot wait to break it down. If you guys missed me, I was on vacation the past three or four days. TJ was holding down the fort, did a fantastic job, but I am glad to be back. We're ready to bring you some more NBA action. I wish I could have covered the Monday, Wednesday slate because from what I hear, uh, those were some very fun slates. But throwing back into the action here, a Thursday two-game NBA slate. And I'm also going to resume uh, the format that I had before I left for vacation, which was me covering the top 10 overall plays on the slate, talking about them from a GPP cash perspective, and then covering my overall favorite plays on the live stream, which I will do a little bit later. Hopefully, we will catch TJ as well. We'll be doing that around 6 to 6.15-ish. And on that live stream, I give a more thorough breakdown. I go team by team, game by game. Um, that way you guys are caught up to speed because we do have some pending injury news right now on a couple teams. So I do believe that it will be significant to you guys. And I will be going live before lock around 6 to 6.15. Also, all my favorite picks, all my favorite cash plays, GPP plays, ownership projections, actual projections are all uploaded to dgfantasy.com. So if you guys want to sign up for that, only $20 a month gives you access to all that. Also, our NFL showdown slates, our NFL main slates, League of Legends, esports, if you guys are into that, and also golf. So now let's go ahead and dive right into this NBA slate. I'm going to be giving you my top favorite 10 plays here for this slate. Coming in at number 10 is going to be Andre Drummond. With there being a lack of value plays on this slate, Andre Drummond makes for a great low-owned GPP punt play. Andre Drummond is averaging 1.42 fantasy points per minute here on the season, which is elite for his 3.8k price tag. He should also dominate the Lakers bench, but he does present an elite matchup versus Dwight Howard. At number 9 is going to be Matisse Thibel. Thibel is an even better play if Danny Green sits. And we all know that Thibel is known more for his defensive presence rather than his scoring ability. This makes me love his matchup because they will need him against the Lakers tonight. He is projected to play 31 minutes even if Danny Green plays and also 35 minutes if Danny Green sits. That minute upside is elite at a 3.6k price tag. Coming in at number 8 is going to be Otto Porter Jr. This is definitely more of a GPP play because I expect Porter Jr.'s ownership to remain low. The Warriors just simply need bigger bodies with Draymond Green out of the lineup and Otto Porter is really all they got. In the last two competitive matchups that Otto Porter has started and played, he's averaged 29 minutes. That is more than enough playing time to hit his 5.1k price tag. He also plays in the higher over-under, which gives him a little bit more upside. At number 7, we got Jared Vanderbilt. He's just been fantastic as of late. He's logged 32 and 36 minutes the last two games that Beverly hasn't played, which makes him an even better play if Beverly sits again. Vanderbilt is also expected to start at power forward, which makes his matchup elite versus Otto Porter. Coming in at number 6 is going to be Tyrese Maxey. You just need to prioritize minute upside here on these small slates, and honestly, Maxey has the highest minute upside on the entire slate. He comes in at a reasonable 6.4k price tag, and he will definitely need to step up without Seth Curry in the lineup. Maxey also gets a 3% usage bump and a 0.08 fantasy point per minute bump without Seth on the floor. He is averaging a respectable 0.92 fantasy points per minute without Seth in the lineup. Coming in at number 5 is going to be my favorite payup option on the entire slate, Joel Embiid. The 76ers are really the only team that are dealing with injuries that really impacts his performance positively. Embiid is averaging 1.83 fantasy points per minute with both Milton and Seth Curry off the floor this season. The 76ers will also need Embiid to step up in a big way if they want to beat the Lakers tonight. It is expected to be a competitive matchup with the spread being a minus 2 right now, so we expect 33 plus minutes from Embiid. Coming in at number 4, and this one might surprise you, is going to be Klay Thompson. It's no secret that Klay Thompson has been shooting a heavy dose of volume since being back in the lineup this season. It also looks like Steve Kerr is giving him a longer leash because he played a season-high 26 minutes last game. He's also averaging 1.16 fantasy points per minute on the higher over-under on the slate. Clay has great ceiling potential because of his ability to just shoot whenever he wants, and I expect him to carry lower ownership. Coming in at number 3 is going to be Korkmaz. Korkmaz could end up being the best value on the slate. Korkmaz is also a better play, especially if Danny Green does sit. With there being little value, it looks like Cork is going to be the best value option just because he's in that starter rotation at a 4.8k price tag. He's also averaging a respectable 0.85 fantasy points per minute without Seth on the floor this season. I expect Cork to be one of the higher owned guys on the slate, especially if Danny Green does sit. Coming in at number two is going to be Patrick Beverly. He's obviously only a good play if he plays. He's averaging one fantasy point per minute here on the season. If he plays, we have him projected at around 28 minutes, which is more than enough to cover his 4.2k price tag. On a very small slate with little value, Beverly stands out the most to me in terms of value. Coming in at number one, my overall favorite play on the slate is going to be Tobias Harris. 
he gets a 4.1% usage bump and a 0.23 fantasy point per minute bump without Seth on the court. He averages 1.26 fantasy points per minute, which is 0.16 higher than the season average. Harris has also averaged 37 minutes a game over the past four games without Seth on the court. He also got a price decrease, which makes him a fantastic point per dollar value at that 7.3k price tag. I do expect Harris to be one of the chalkier guys on the slate. And that will wrap up my video, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy this content. If you did, please do hit that subscription button, notification bell, and of course, smash that like button for all of your future NBA content. With all that being said, have a great rest of your day and let's cash.